Hello, Internet. It is I, Malik Aaron Aaron, and welcome back to Box Office Predictions. Today, we're going to be talking about the holdovers. So, as usual, we're going to be going over the pros and cons. So, let's get to it. Pros. So, this is from Alexander Payne. About to show you his resume. Is it the first time I'm talking about... It is. Okay. So, this dude has made some movies. Some movies that people quite like. One of them being Election, a movie I love. <laughs> Even though the movie didn't too well financially. I love it to death because it's such a great flick. I'd highly recommend it. So there's that about Schmidt, Sideways, uh, The Descendants. I guess in Nebraska, I don't know about the reception for Nebraska. I'm not sure about that. But I know Descendants was very well received. It was a big hit. So, yeah. So, Alexander Payne's track record is quite good as long as we don't talk about downsizing. <laughs> but, you know, I might as well mention downsizing. That movie was a bust. An absolute bust. It was a bomb <laughs> when it comes to critics and audiences and the box office. It absolutely tanked. So, but, yeah, ignoring that, his track record is pretty good. So, I would label that as a pro. So, that's pro number one. Pro number two, let's look at our cast here. The main name here, the important name here, is Paul Giamatti. And this dude's been around for a while. He's been a lot of stuff. It's kind of <laughs> insane. So, let's go through his... Let's comb through his resume Trying to find like stuff that I would recognize immediately. Sabrina and best my best friend's re wedding. Saving Private Ryan. He was in that movie. I didn't even know that. Man, the a Big Mama's house. I know that. Planet of the Ape. I think he was one of the apes in that movie. Uh, my Big Fat Liar. I know that's like a classic for, you know, the millennial generation when they were kids. What else? Paycheck sideways. So this is not Paul Giamatti's first rodeo with uh, Alexander Payne. He's been he's collaborated with him before. Robots. I remember that movie. That's definitely a childhood favorite of mine. But that's a that's animated. It's not relevant here. See Cinderella Man, Lady in the Water. Oof, we're gonna move right past that. Um. The Illusionist. Let's see. It's Fred Claus. Does anyone, anyone even remember that movie? I doubt it. <laughs> I seriously doubt it. What else do we got? This He was in Hangover Part 2. Really? I don't remember that at all. Grant, I haven't seen Hangover Part 2. I have no plans to watch that movie. I've seen the first. That's all I need to see. The sequels. I can live without. <laughs> so let's see. Ides of March, Rock of Ages. As he's, most of these are like side roles, like supporting roles. Let's see. 12 Years a Slave, Save Mr. Banks, Amazing Spider Man. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm getting flashbacks to that where he, he was Rhino, who was only in the movie for like, what, less than like 10, 15 minutes? And they put him in the advertising thinking he was going to be like a big deal in the movie. And the whole thing was just a lie. It was blatant false marketing. <laughs> false advertising. Remember? Uh, uh. <laughs> and it was like the goofiest character ever. Like he was. It was terrible. <laughs> uh, so I hate that I'm reminded of that. Let's see, San Andreas, Straya Compton. Uh, Jungle Cruise, and now here we are with the holdovers. So, yeah, Paul Giamatti's been in a lot of stuff. He is super recognizable. So, I'm going to label that as a pro. And let's see what other pros. Oh, reviews. Reviews are very, very good. Is that 96% critic score, 92% audience score? How can I call the, how can I call that bad? How can I call that a con? Like, that'd be really dumb to do that. So, yeah. High scores. 
Pro. Uh, is there any other pros I can think of? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I can't really think of anything else. So I'm just going to go the cons. I think it'll be easier right now. Uh, cons. Although this movie is, you know, highly reviewed, there isn't a, this movie isn't getting a whole lot of attention. Like, no one really cares that much. And I don't know, maybe it's because, you know, this is very much like an award season flick. It's Oscar bait flick. And the power of Oscar bait has significantly <laughs> dipped in the last few years, especially last year. Last year was a bloodbath. None of those Oscar movies did well financially. Nobody cared about any of them. So, yeah, I feel like we may or may not see a repeat of that this year. Although it might be a, a little better, but yeah, I feel like some of these Oscar bait movies, they're not going to do well because I guess audiences, they don't have like a strong reason to watch them. <laughs> I don't know. So, like, I guess. The fact that this is very much an Oscar bait type movie and, you know, Oscar bait movies have not been doing very well the past few years. Yeah, I'm going to label that as a con. I guess another con is that the movie might be a little, what's the word, dated for like audiences because the movie takes place in the 70s, right? And it's and well, a premise like, like with the time... Ugh, I'm losing my train of thought. So it's this movie kind of has the same problem as Are You Was it Are You There God? It's Me, Margaret, where that movie was set like way in the past. So like pretty much like today's audiences, you know, young people, they're not gonna give a shit. They're not gonna care. This doesn't connect with them at all. I mean, sure, there's Oppenheimer, which is you know obviously set in the past, but. At least, like, you know, that movie, it looked a lot more appealing. It looked, I guess, cooler for younger people. Not to mention that movie was fueled by the Barbenheimer memes, which really appealed to my generation. But this doesn't have that advantage. This is very much geared towards an older demographic. A demographic that's become very, uh, not, has, hasn't exactly been the most reliable lately, when it comes to box office, so yeah, that's a problem. So I say the fact that the movie might be a little too old school, a little too dated for most audiences these days. Lay Vlad is a con. I guess another con is that although this weekend isn't too bad, I mean you got the Marvels, but nobody's nobody cares about that. But after that you know, um, it's going to look a little rough. There's going to be a lot of movies coming out. You know, Hunger Games, Songbird, you know, Songbirds and Snakes, Trolls 3, Thanksgiving. Um, I, Next Goal wins, I guess. But that movie, I felt that movie's DOA. Um, Wish, Napoleon, Saltburn. Lots of award season flicks are going to start popping up in the near future. So that this movie may suffer because of that. So that's a con. Uh I guess I can mention it's limited release. It hasn't exactly gone great. <laughs> it's uh first weekend. It was in six theaters and it had a 35k per theater average, which isn't really ideal. Really, you you want a, a much higher average, like 60k 70k 100k that's what you want that looks good in headlines like 35k really doesn't it looks kind of mediocre and then it expanded 64 theaters last weekend and it has like 8.8 k per theater average which really isn't good so yeah um these numbers aren't great. They don't exactly spell success. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, a lackluster limited run. I'm going to label that as a con. And I, is that it? 
I think that's it. So opening weekend. So this is going to be in like what less than 800 theaters. So hmm. I feel like it can definitely hit over a million. Just if it can hit half of a million in like 64 theaters, then surely it should hit a million in like 800 something theaters, right? <laughs> should. So I'm going to say I'm gonna be safe. Two two to four million. Let's say two to four million. Two to four million opening weekend. And it's total it could have long legs, judging by its reception, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna say ten million or less. So that's what I'm gonna go. With. Ten million or less. So yeah. That's it for the holdovers we got three more movies to discuss it's a wonderful knife journey to bethlehem and last but certainly not least the marvels it's a shame i have to talk about that last because i want to talk about it so bad i want to dissect that really bad but i can't so yeah <laughs> But those videos will be coming, so stay tuned for those. But yeah, that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn notifications, share the whole drill. I'll check out more videos like this. I've got playlists on the homepage. All previous uh, prediction videos I made this year or the past few years, you want, to watch, you want to watch any of them from beginning to now, I highly encourage you to do that, so go do it. There's also the Cancelled series where I go over all the movies that were supposed to come out but didn't. I talked about this movie one time, and that's when it got its November release date. And that was episode 179. I talked about it alongside Paw Patrol, the Mighty movie, so yeah. <laughs> and recently, I've made like three canceled episodes like this week. The first one, like 215, was about Venom 3, and then 216 was about MCU movies. Plus Musta uh Mufasa the Lion King. And 217 was a real sad one. Cody versus Acme got canned by Warner Brothers, despite the fact that the movie is apparently really, really good. So like that decision makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> and it, it's it pisses me off legitimately. I really hope Warner Brothers gets sued over that. They should get sued. <laughs> but or someone should leak it out of spite. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. I'm crossing my fingers. So that was like the last three cancel episodes. 2, 15, 16, 17. So if you want to watch any of those episodes from beginning to now. You want to binge them all from beginning to now. I highly encourage you do that. So go do it. There's also box office recaps where I go over the box office results for any particular month. October recap. It's, it's happening Saturday. Technically today as I'm recording this. It's, it's going to happen. Okay. I'm going to record it, I'm going to upload it, and publish it. It's going to happen. I guarantee it will happen. So no more delays, no more pushback. It will happen today. So stay tuned. But if you want to watch any of the past uh, recap videos I made on the channel, you can go right ahead. And oh, November recap. That will come out the first week of December after all the December 1st movies pop up. Between that... Oh, between those and the boy and the heron, heron is that how you say it? I maybe I don't, know, whatever. So the first week of December, that's when the November recap will pop up. So stay tuned for that. But if you want to watch any of the past recap videos of Man of the Channel, you can go right ahead. And yeah, that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.